Um, thank you everybody for joining um, us today. Um, I'm delighted to be working with our partners Eureka and we're going to be looking at the benefits that their customers can achieve when automating purchase to pay processes by extending the functionality within NetSuite. So just to give you a really uh, brief background on, on who we are, Complete Software have been offering purchase to pay automation software in the UK since 2008 and globally since 2017. So my name is Kerry Bates and I've got a background working with automation technology spanning over a decade. I've worked with Complete Software for over a year. Previously, I was um, with a company called Sage, worked with them for 10 years as a business development manager in the accountants division. So I've been fortunate to, to be given the opportunity to support a number of businesses by introducing technology that's enabled their resources to be directed at value added tasks, and also delivered them cost saving uh, by streamlining the manual processes to, to, deliver, to deliver time saving efficiencies. Today, we're going to look at the seven main benefits that are achieved by automating purchase to pay processes. So a very common goal that many businesses are looking to achieve is to go paperless. We hear this from the majority of businesses that we speak to. Increasing productivity is also always very high on the agenda of key points um, that our customers want to discuss with us. In terms of visibility, finance teams are often the last to know what's being spent across a business. Being able to give them the visibility of this can bring very obvious benefits. Being able to control spend as it's happening across the business brings efficiencies and cost control where it matters most, which is upfront. Also having spend data that is updated as it changes or as it happens is important to enable effective decision-making and improving supplier relationships by having real-time information to allow the timely payment of invoices and also to allow the right conversations to happen. So when we look at the purchase to pay automation journey, it almost always starts with removing the paper and having the ability to capture invoices digitally in one centralized system. By removing the need for manual data input and repetitive coding for each individual invoice, you can also automate the routing of invoices around the businesses for appropriate sign off without the need to print and pass around, which in itself can cause frustration and be a timely process. By introducing AI or machine learning technology, the immediate productivity gains at this point measure between 60 and 90%, giving each appropriate member of the team full, vi full visibility of the status of each invoice from the point of receipt to posting into the finance system. So secondly, you're gonna increase the percentage productivity and increase that we've seen to this point by introducing purchasing automation. So if a PO is raised and approval is gained before the purchase is committed with the supplier, then when the invoice matches the PO, you may not require approval at invoice stage. You can automatically route the invoice for approval if you know who purchased the goods or services. When purchasing automation is introduced, your AP team will, will only have to manage invoice exceptions. So invoices that do not match or are out of tolerance, which takes the AP process to the next level. It's no longer necessary to manually populate a requisition form and submit a purchase order to the supplier. You can simply automate the process with our integrated online buying with supplier websites. Finally, the integration directly to your finance system, NetSuite in this case, in real time, posts back approved invoice data. It's not unusual for finance teams to share their frustration with us around this very common problem. So how can you know what invoices are coming in and when they're coming in if you don't know what has been purchased or by who? Very often the first point that the finance team will know that spend has happened is when an invoice arrives, 
and they start to unpick who has made the purchase, who authorised the purchase, if in fact anyone has. Knowing what has been budgeted or approved and ordered at the time it happens allows you to free up cash reserves and ensure that your forecast and spend are closely aligned. With a simple tool, your budget holders will appreciate the controls they gain, all whilst the finance team keeps complete visibility. So when purchases are made ad hoc, for example, by calling up suppliers or sending them an email, it's hard to know who's spending with who and at what price. It's also almost impossible to ensure that any preferential pricing that has been previously agreed has been honoured by the supplier. By introducing purchasing automation, you gain control over which suppliers are used, which items are being bought and what prices are being charged. You can review a breakdown spend per supplier to make sure your business is making good purchase decisions. A big concern when looking to make process changes is how to get buy-in across the company from potential users. So with simple to use integrated online buying, you gain up to 100% user adoption from day one, offering the best user experience. Streamlined approval processes, including parallel approvals, means that your purchase orders or invoices can be approved faster by sending your transactions to one or multiple people at the same time based on line level coding. And this, this ensures no bottlenecks um, and no long winded approval steps. Orders and invoices that are higher value than normal can be routed to more senior members of the team for sign off. And you can also set nominated users to deal with approvals when staff or out of office. And you only ever need to include relevant staff members to ensure a timely sign off for orders and invoices. So having the time and resource to monitor and review spend by supplier isn't always a given for every business. And this can result in spending decisions being made without all of the important facts to hand. So having a monthly or yearly report of spend by supplier, by department or by GL code using real time data and also historical data can give you back control of your budgets, cash and capital, and also help to maintain supplier relationships by allowing faster processing, which in turn drives payments to be made more promptly. So what we're looking at on screen here is just an example of some of the customer industries that we currently um, work with. So we are industry and vertical agnostic. Um, we've got a, a lot of customers that sit within the charity and not-for-profit not segment, and also a lot of customers sitting in the, the education segment, but we can work and uh, work with, with anybody at all. Let me give you a little bit of a, um, a testimonial here from one of our Customers that have been using us for a few years now, it's the White Horse Federation, which is a, a large school, large multi-academy trust. Um, they adopted online buying with Amazon Business and YPO through Complete to control and reduce their costs because our combined solution offers an optimized user experience, which automates purchasing directly with Amazon Business, who they were already working with. They had a near 100% end user adoption rate across nearly 300 members of staff on day one. So the entire business is delighted with the solution because it enforces the correct and auditable compliance with their approved workflow structures, provides the required visibility of every transaction by status. User adoption here was key. So if all of their staff are purchasing from the suppliers that they want, they solve all of the three core pain points highlighted to get the overall cost savings, gain visibility and control over their approval process and visibility of every transaction and automating automation around the invoice processing, which reduces the manual intervention required. So they chose to designate an admin contact in each of their schools to buy through Amazon and Complete, which has driven, driven real savings on what they were already buying with the introduction of integrated online buying with Amazon Business. 
Also, the time saved in the accounts payable process has allowed their finance team to focus on more important activities. So instead of being focused around manual tasks that are now automated to a high degree. We're going to look at a quick demonstration now. I'm just going to switch my screen. And hopefully you are now looking at the iComplete login screen. So iComplete is a web browser based application. It's hosted on Microsoft Azure. So you inherit all of the uh, Microsoft Azure security that would be really important when we're talking about financial transactions. You log in very simply with um, an email address and password. And we're taken into the, the home screen. So this is the first screen that users will come to um, when they're logging into iComplete. Um, what we're looking at here is a number of tasks and activities that can be performed within iComplete. We're going to look at one or two of these in the demonstration today. We're also looking here at the e-invoicing email address. So every business that onboards to iComplete is giving a, given a unique e-invoicing email address. It is as best practice that your suppliers send in their, their supplier invoices into this email address where they will go through the complete capture engine. The data is extracted from that invoice at both header and line level using a combination of AI and machine learning technology. It's then presented back to the user in, the, in a digital document um, for coding before it can be transferred back into NetSuite. The bottom that we're looking at here are our recommended suppliers. So for the demonstration today, we're going to be using Amazon Business um, to demonstrate how easy it could be to raise a digital requisition and send it off for approval. So let's start the journey now. If we click on the Amazon Business tile, we're taken straight through into the Amazon Business um, page where we've got these categories that can allow us to start selecting what it is that we want to buy. So today we're gonna to buy some office supplies. We click onto the tile and we're taken into the Amazon business site. We can now just start and search and populate our basket with the items that it is that we want to buy. Today, we're just gonna buy some A4 paper and we can then select the quantity that we need and add the item to our basket. At this point, the whole buying journey is completely familiar to what most people would be used to. And at this point, rather than proceeding to check out, we're going to submit these items for approval. What this does is it then populates a digital requisition document, pulling those basket items back into iComplete for me to review. And we can see that the majority of this requisition document has been pre-populated for us. So we've got all of the header information, um, the supplier name, the supplier ordering address, the delivery address has been preset for me. Um, and we've got the line item information, which has been populated with the unit cost and quantity, the net bad and gross, and some analysis that's been pre-coded based, um, based on this supplier. At this point, as the buyer, all I need to do is to submit this item out to the supplier to purchase. For the purpose of the demonstration, we've configured this in the most simple way so that the buyer has got their own approval threshold and this item doesn't need to go through, to the, through for approval but can simply be bought by clicking the purchase button here. At this point, the um, item has gone directly out to the supplier. And we can see a number of trade pages here which are showing me items that I have submitted previously, who has submitted them and where they sit in the approval workflow. The item that I just ordered there has got dropped straight into my approved tray because I have my own approval threshold. And when I click into it there, we can see a copy of the, the, the requisition document. And when I click into my timeline, I can see for audit purposes, the date that the requisition was raised and the date that the order was sent over to the supplier. You can also review a copy of the purchase order which has been attached for me. As well as self-approval, you can set up different workflows, approval workflows, so that if you want to, you can route those items for sign-off if, for example, they fall outside of budgeting. And I'll show you what that looks like here. 
Workflows can be set up very easily by clicking into configuration. And here we're going to look at an example of a very simple workflow process. In the finance workflow here, we decided that we're going to allow invoices and credit notes to be routed into this workflow. We could also select orders only or all transaction types depending on the business need. In this workflow that we're looking at here, there's a very simple two-step process. So all items that are routed into the finance workflow would go to the person sitting in position one in junior finance, and they would need to give their sign off in order for it to progress to become a fully approved invoice to be posted into the finance system. In this particular example here, we have set a separate second step where the CFO wants to review any transactions if they have a value of 5,000 pounds or above. If they are 5,000 pounds or below, they're gonna circumnavigate step two and simply um, be posted across into the finance system. We also have the option to configure specific criteria. If we want to, we can add criteria to, um, to route for approval at header and at line level. For example, if you want to have um, approval by department, that can be configured as a simultaneous workflow um, to, to speed up that sign off process. When invoices are coming back in from suppliers and they go through the data capture engine through that unique e-invoicing email address that we looked at at the beginning of the demonstration, this is where they're gonna come into the, into the iComplete application. So here we're sitting in our invoices tray and this is where the finance team would spend the majority of their time. Again, we can see a number of different tray pages that we can interact with. The first one here being the unprocessed tray. Invoices that fall into the unprocessed tray require some kind of human intervention. It's also where we see the invoice matching status. So if purchase orders have been raised within iComplete, we're going to attempt to match the invoice back to that purchase order at header level. And the match is done on the, um, the supplier name, the purchase order number, and the overall amount of the invoice. So some different um, matching statuses that we can see here. No purchase order match. That potentially means that it was a direct invoice, maybe one that's come in, for example, from um, a utility supplier, where you wouldn't expect there to be a corresponding purchase invoice to match to. We can see a matched invoice, whereby we have been able to perform the match of the invoice against that originating purchase order. We can see, for example, invoice duplicate, where the system has recognized this unique supplier reference number. Perhaps we just need to delete that one out. And then we also see things like part match, overmatch, or supplier mismatch. So overmatch or part match, meaning that the, the net, the, the overall amount of the invoice hasn't matched back to the purchase order. So we need to take some action on that. Just gonna jump into a matched invoice here to show you what that, what that data looks like when it's presented back to us in the digital document. So jumping into the invoice here, we can see page one of a two page breakdown of that invoice information. So what's been extracted through the capture engine is all of the header information. So we can see um, the supplier name, the supplier reference, the purchase order in this instance. You can actually pull back and view the purchase order um, if you choose to. We have got no bank details to match in this example here, but what the system will try and do is match bank details that the supplier provides on the invoice against supplier bank details that are held within NetSuite. And that's just the first line of defense, defense for your finance team before they authorize any payment run. We can also see all of the line item information which has been extracted for us here. So the description, the unit cost quantity, the net VAT and gross amount, and also some analysis, which has either been inherited from the purchase order, or if it's being applied at invoice stage, it can be um, automated based on the, the supply or the type of order, that type of invoice that it is. When we click into edit, we're taken into a second page breakdown of that information that was available to us on page one. So we can see a copy of the invoice, albeit slightly skewed here, my apologies for that. And we can also drop down and review any supporting documentation that was captured alongside that invoice. So for example, any um, delivery note or the body of an email, for example, will also be captured and stored within the iComplete application. 
We can see here that we can review the um, supplier name to make sure that it is a correct match for the supplier name that's held within NetSuite. Um, and we can also see the, um, the purchase order number, the invoice date, we can add a comment if we need to. We can also go in and review each item at line level if we need to. So again, we can review the line item description and we can make any changes at this stage if we spot anything that is wrong with the VAT code or the account code. Jumping back into header level, we've got the option of this button here to map supplier defaults. By mapping supplier defaults, we're effectively layering, layering up the automation that can be delivered within the iComplete application. So when the invoice is coming from Amazon Business in this occasion and landed in the unprocessed tray and it's required some kind of human intervention, this tells me why it needed human intervention in this scenario. So we pre-mapped the account code, we pre-mapped the tax code and pre-mapped the currency code. But what the software didn't know what to do was where to send it um, into which workflow for final approval before it is authorized and um, posted back into NetSuite. At this point, if I choose to, I can now map that workflow so that next time the um, an invoice comes in from Amazon, it's gonna route directly into the finance workflow for the finance team to pick up, review and authorize before it's posted into, into NetSuite. What that's gonna do is it's gonna reduce the number of invoices that come into the unprocessed tray, meaning less and less human intervention is required. Once an invoice is fully approved, it will drop into the um, approved tray and it is automatically posted into NetSuite in real time as we've got a distributed connector. Um, once it's posted into NetSuite, we can go back in and we can review the document. We can review the timeline and we've got a fully built out audit trail showing the date and timestamp that the um, document was posted into the NetSuite um, application. That completes at a high level the, the purchase to pay automation journey. There's obviously um, a lot more configuration that can be done, which we would scope out on an, on an individual basis, but that's the, the high level demonstration for you there today. Thanks very much, Kerry, for a fantastic and informative uh, presentation. Um, do we have any questions um, on the, uh, the chat? One moment. If you can check that, Kerry. I was just looking into some of the questions, just to let uh, uh, the attendees know, we will be following up with um, um, with all attendees via email. And if recording of the webinar is required, this can be provided. Great, I've just been able to pull some of the questions out of the chat there, apologies about that. Okay. Um, so we've got a few questions that have come through. So first question is around the online buying tools. Can we find out more information about the online buying tools. So for the purpose of the demonstration today, you would notice that I used Amazon Business, uh, which is a, um, a supplier that we find quite commonly used. Um, we do integrate with a number of um, other integrated suppliers currently, and we're also just releasing our supplier plugin tools. So that means that for every business that uses iComplete, if they have got uh, suppliers that are perhaps unique, or local to, to their business, we can actually um, configure the same type of integration so that you would get your own unique um, dashboard of suppliers to allow that same buying experience for your users. And that's something that we would always discuss on a one-on-one on -on -one basis with any potential clients. Um, a question around pricing of the product. So the product's priced based on, on two different things. So the first thing that we price on is the number of users that would be required to log into iComplete. So that would be people who are raising orders, people who are approving orders, or people in the finance, um, finance team. And then we also price based on transactions. So one invoice coming into the Complete Capture Engine would be classed as one transaction credit, regardless of the number of line items that were on the invoice or the, the pages um, on the invoice. So two different ways that we price and we can give you some more information about that on a one-on-one on -on -one basis. 
Um, and yes, you are. Somebody's just asking whether or not they'll be sent a copy of the session. Yes, you are sent a copy of the session afterwards, which I believe that um, Eureka are going to arrange for you. There's no more questions in the chat at the moment, but if you do have any after the session has ended, you're more than welcome to forward those over to, to Eureka and those questions can be ans answered on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Yeah, great. Thank, thanks, Kerry. Um, thanks, audience, uh, for your attendance and participation and questions today. I hope you uh, enjoyed it and got something to take away and uh, think about. Um, please do feel free to reach out to your Eureka Solutions account manager if you have any further questions or if you'd be interested in contacting Complete Software. So hopefully we'll look forward to hearing from you. Thanks everybody for, for joining and please enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.